Hello everyone. I am Dr. Dhanraj Chan from Pune, India, and a very warm welcome and greetings to you in this ISDS Shamdama joint webinar. Today, what I'm going to present is about regional nerve blocks that we as dermatologists can practice in our day-to-day -day OPDs and uh, minor surgeries that we do about of the skin. What I'm going to cover today is the most common ones. So the scope that I'm going to cover is nerve blocks for procedures on the scalp, which will uh, cover the supraorbital, supratoclear, zygomatico temporal, auricular temporal, and the occipital nerve blocks. Then over the face, apart from the supraorbital and supra, uh, supratoclear, the infratoclear, the external nasal, the infraorbital, the mental, and also the uh, ear block. All of this is something that uh, is helpful to us while doing the various procedures that we do in our OPDs. We can see that the face is majorly the sensory supplies from the trigeminal nerve, the ophthalmic, the maxillary and the mandibular branches. The posterior scalp and the lower jawline and the neck is from the cervical plexus. So to cover all of this, uh, we, I will just show short videos of each along with some basic landmarks and the anatomical references for the same. In the scalp, when we go on, we see the frontal area, the supraorbital and the supratrochlea covers the central portion of the scalp, both sides, so here. The lateral side, the temple region is covered by the zygomatico temporal, then the lateral part by the auricular temporal and the branch of it, that's the greater auricular branch. The occipital nerve, uh, the greater occipital and the lesser occipital covers the posterior part of the scalp. So in the supraorbital and supratrochlear uh, innervation that we get, the origin in, into the skin is from the supraorbital notch of the foramen and it is about 2.5 to 3 centimeters from the midline. So once we get that, the supratrochlear nerve is 1 centimeter medial to the supraorbital nerve. So both of this can be accessed through the same injection point. We first palpate for the notch, go in, as you can see in this video, go in infiltrate there and then go medially again infiltrate of course all the infiltrations are before in the infiltration we aspirate it and then inject the solutions usually can be one percent or two percent what i am using is two percent lidocaine can also be one percent of lidocaine with adrenaline the frontal nerve arises in the orbit and divides into the supratoclear and supra uh, orbital branches medially the supratoclear and laterally the supraorbital branch uh, by the frontal nerve. Then the auricular temporal is the next one which we will cover in this side. The nerve originates from the mandibular nerve immediately below the foramen oval in the infratemporal fossa. And the auricular temporal nerve it has multiple roots and then it is formed. So in this what we have to see is that it supplies the skin of the temporal region and to inject it we palpate the artery near the angle and uh, we palpated in front of the trachis go inside and behind the arteries where we infiltrate the whole local anesthesia that's lidocaine is what i am using here the zygomatico temporal nerve basically the anterior temple if you want to inflate uh, block or give uh, anesthesia to that area that is the block that we use it is a branch of the zygomatic nerve and the origin is in the uh, zygomatico tem uh, temporal foramen so we slide the needle behind the concave portion of the lateral orbital rim. You can also see in the skull how uh, where the foramen is placed and that is how we go in behind and inject it. The next one that you are going to see is the greater and uh, lesser occipital nerve. It is the, the landmarks are the line joining the external occipital protuberance. You can see my finger at the external occipital protuberance and the mastoid. So whatever line joins those. We divide that line into three equal parts. The junctions of these three equal parts is where the point of junction is where we inject it. In the medial, uh, the junction of the lateral two thirds and the medial one third is the greater occipital nerve. And in the lateral one third and the medial two thirds, the point at the junction is the lesser occipital nerve. So this is how we inject in there. We have to go a bit deeper here and uh, see once we hit the bone, that is where we infiltrate. Uh, I've used lesser anesthesia here because these are demo videos. Then, so that covers the scalp. To summarize and revise, uh, these are the six nerves which we block. We can give a complete anesthesia for the scalp skin. 
in the face what we are going again going to see is we already saw the supraorbital supratrochlear and the zygomatico temporal apart from this the other nerves that we need to block to cover the facial skin is the zygomatico temporal uh, is the zygomatico uh, facial the infratrochlear the external nasal infraorbital and the mental nerve also the ear is a full unit in itself which also i'll show through photos the infratrochlear nerve the landmark is the superior superior medial border of the orbit so this is the area where we basically inject to anesthetize the nerve the infratrochlear nerve arises from the nasociliary nerve so the nasociliary nerve is one of the three branches of the ophthalmic nerve and uh, it supplies the bridge of the nose here the topmost part is what we get to anesthetize if we block the infratrochlear nerve the external nasal nerve uh, so the skin of the lower and the central uh, nose so this basically this central part the tip of the nose is and uh, and if can be anesthetized by blocking the external nasal nerve uh, which is the terminal portion of the anterior ethmoidal nerve which originates also from the nasociliary nerve so the uh, so this block uh, basically can be given we palpate for the nasal bridge and once we get to the junction of the bridge and the nasal cartilage about 0.8 cm to 1 cm from the midline is where the nerve emerges and if we infiltrate in that area we will uh, get it the infraorbital nerve basically it innervates the upper lip the medial cheek the nasolabial fold the ala of the nose the lateral ala and the inferior eyelid so this portion is all that can be anesthetized if we block the infraorbital nerve the infraorbital nerve can be blocked to two approaches one is the transcutaneous approach which we are seeing in this video basically in the mid pupillary line about a centimeter below the infraorbital margin is where the infraorbital foramen lies we go in palpate aspirate and inject the transcutaneous or approach in the, for the infraorbital nerve is going up from up straight up from in the mid pupil, uh, pupillary line from the second premolar tooth so we look for the second premolar tooth or just the junction in between the first and second premolar tooth go in the other finger has to be near the infraorbital foramen so that you feel for the needle tip and once you are near there you infiltrate it whole about 1 to 2 cc of anesthesia in that area should do if required you can always of course stop up later the mental nerve same position the second premolar tooth or the junction in between the first and second premolar tooth approximately go down this time and uh, with the other finger blocking it you can inject it that that will block the mental nerve the mental nerve basically will help us anesthetize the chin area and the lower lips for so for surgeries of that area this will is what will help us the zygomatico facial nerve basically the triangle in the inferior lateral part of the orbital or the zygomatic area it's uh, it can be uh, anesthetized with this this is the terminal branch of the zygomatic nerve along and uh, the inferior inferior lateral portion of the orbital rim is what we can anesthetize with this so it's basically very superficial which we can go the regional nerve block as we can see the re, uh, the ear basically by the three nerves that we have so just superficially giving in the borders of the ear if we infiltrate we will be able to block the ear and give anesthesia to the skin of the ear so any surgeries of the ear that we want to do skin surgery superficial we can use this approach basically two points up of the ear and below the ear just mark them go superficially below the skin and create a diamond shaped infiltrative border which will anesthetize the ear so from the top these are the two needle directions that we need to take and from below these are the other two so once we cover the whole ear the border of it we should be able to get anesthesia for the ear so that was uh, all the nerve blocks that uh, i could demonstrate in this uh, time of 15 minutes for you thank you so much for the opportunity to share all of these and we can easily do this in our opds with practice of course we need to keep in mind there are variations in the nerve distributions and sometimes we may not be able to get it right the first time so extending the area of the block in those times always helps and some amount of patience to let the anesthesia set in also helps thank you so much for watching and giving me the opportunity to be here in uh, egypt of course virtually and eagerly waiting for the next year when we can physically come and visit you thank you so much